lifestyle medicine is the use of lifestyle interventions directed at the treatment, management, and prevention of disease. Hey folks, Dr. Keel here, and I want to talk about this interesting study that was recently published. It's called The Global Sodium Consumption and Death from Cardiovascular Causes, published by Mozaffarian et al. in the New England Journal of Medicine. And the objective was to estimate the effect of high sodium intake on global cardiovascular mortality. Previously, I have reported on the effects of too much sodium on your body, how salt or sodium raises your blood pressure, and 13 ways that you can reduce your salt intake. I would strongly encourage you to check out those videos if you're interested or you want to learn more. Uh, they'll certainly advance your understanding of the relationship between salt and your health. In this study, the authors acknowledge what we already know, that high salt intake is associated with high blood pressure, and this is a known risk factor for cardiovascular disease, including heart attacks. However, the impact of salt intake on death around the globe, among various geographic regions and countries, has not been well established in the literature, and the authors of this study sought to answer that question. So they used survey data from 66 countries, which accounted for almost three-quarters of adults in the world. This allowed them to quantify the global consumption of sodium according to age, sex, and country. They also used a meta-analysis of 107 randomized interventions to calculate the effects of sodium on blood pressure and cardiovascular mortality. They then used that information to estimate the cardiovascular effects of current sodium intake using 2 grams of sodium per day as a reference according to age, sex, and country. And so the average level of sodium consumption across the planet was almost 4 grams per day. Globally, uh, you could say 1.65 million deaths annually from cardiovascular disease could be attributed to sodium intake above the reference level. And that was about 60% in men and 40% in women. These deaths accounted for nearly 10% of all deaths from cardiovascular causes. 80% of these deaths occurred in low- and middle-income countries, and 40% occurred before the age of 70, which the authors considered premature. And then the rate of death from cardiovascular causes associated with sodium intake was highest in the country of Georgia and lowest in the country of Kenya. And so in conclusion, this study identifies a global trend to increase sodium intake with increased risk of high blood pressure and death from cardiovascular disease. No regions and very few countries were spared from this global trend. And the information can be used by both physicians and epidemiologists across the world to increase awareness and policy changes aimed at reducing salt consumption. A new report says that salt was linked with 2.3 million deaths throughout the world during 2010. Direct causes of death were heart disease, heart attack, and strokes, but some researchers are blaming salt or sodium intake as the major factor in the deaths. About a million of the deaths tied to salt were premature, meaning that the person died before they were 69 years old. According to the American Heart Association, about 75% of people in the world consume twice the daily recommended amount of sodium. Eating a lot of sodium can increase blood pressure, and that can be a contributing factor in developing heart disease. Because the results of the research are based on extrapolated data from heart-related deaths, the number they arrived at could be a stretch. The Salt Institute is saying the research findings are flawed and went on the offensive, saying, The fact that the authors of this study and the American Heart Association choose to represent this shoddy modeling exercise as evidence of authentic cardiovascular mortality figures reveals an agenda far more rooted in sensationalist politics than in science. Mmm, salt! It's like my second favorite food group, after chocolate, of course.
Hey everyone, Lisa Green here for DNews. There are warnings abound about the dangers of a high sodium diet, and it's true that most packaged foods are full of the stuff, probably half the reason it tastes so good, to be honest. But just how terrible is salt? Is there such a thing as not enough? A new international study in the New England Journal of Medicine monitored over 100,000 people in 17 countries for four years and found that those who ate moderate amounts of salt were healthier than those who consumed a lot of salt and those who only consumed a little salt. They defined moderate as 3,000 to 6,000 milligrams a day. For perspective, Americans eat 3,400 milligrams of salt a day, and the World Health Organization recommends that people only consume about 2,000 milligrams a day. The scientists found that those who consume between 3,000 and 6,000 milligrams of salt a day have a lower risk of cardiovascular issues. They also had a lower risk of death over the four-year study. They tracked the patient's salt intake with daily urine samples in the morning, which is a reliable way to measure how much sodium and potassium the individual has consumed. The potassium was important to track because it protects against some of the negative effects of salt, like raising your blood pressure. Those who ate more than 1,500 milligrams of potassium a day were also less likely to have heart disease or to die. Not that surprising, both because of potassium's effect on salt and because potassium is in a lot of fruit and veggies. Those people probably have healthier diets. This study emphasizes what other recent studies have been finding. It's possible to get too little salt, especially amongst generally healthy people. And it's possible that all of the high sodium fear is a little misguided. Another study last April in the American Journal of Hypertension found that those who consume between 2,500 and 5,000 milligrams of salt a day have lower mortality rates and that low sodium diets could be harmful to the healthy. The Institute of Medicine also released a report last year finding that consuming under 2,300 milligrams a day didn't prevent heart disease. Still, the American Heart Association isn't convinced. They say the methods of the new study are questionable, especially how they measure the salt in people's urine. There's also another study in the same issue of the New England Journal of Medicine which directly conflicting findings. The second study, which was carried out at Harvard, found that 1.65 million global cardiovascular deaths are linked with high sodium consumption. So unfortunately, because the evidence is so conflicted, there's no final word on salt yet. In the meantime, it appears to be safer to err on the side of not enough salt than too much. So do you eat a lot of salt or are you low sodium? Tell me about it in the comments and I'll see you next time. Mmm, salt. It's like my second